You're considering placing your property on the market and you want to know exactly how to get a bidding war, how to get multiple offers on your property. This is exactly the video to watch no matter where in the country you're at. And I want to start this off with this. Have you ever gone shopping? online or in person, if people even do in-person shopping anymore. And have you ever seen a, a coat or a jacket or a shirt or shoes and been like, oh wow, that's like a pretty good, you know what, let me let me see if I could try those on. And then you look at the price tag beforehand because I hope that you do that. <laughs> I hope that you look at the price. I always play the game like I'll buy it if it's under this amount. Anyway, that's a side note. Have you ever looked at the tag and seen the price and been like, oh my gosh, wait, it's worth that much? I'm not even going to try it on. The same thing applies to houses, my friends. People will see houses on these public facing websites and they'll be like, wait, the house is listed at how much? I don't even wanna go visit. That is not the position that I want you to have when you go to sell your property. I'm Ali Garced, I'm a real estate agent. I am for hire, I work in multiple states. And if you're not within the Tucson area, Vail, Sabadita, Green Valley, Marana, and you're looking to sell your property elsewhere, I am also licensed in Minnesota, but if you're not in that random state either, then I can connect you to another top producer. Shoot me a text or book a call using the link below because I want to make sure that you are in good hands and you are, I can refer you to a couple of agents that you can interview. That way you can make sure that you vibe with that agent and that agent can help you sell at the price terms and when you want. You're going to be taken care of no matter who you choose from who I refer you to, but that is the way to get started. Shoot me a text or book a call using the link below. So how do you get multiple offers on your property? It's obviously not listing it higher than what your neighbors sold for. We are no longer than 2020, 2021, 2022 timeframe where you could be that trendsetter. Every single house that was on the market for sale at that time was just setting a new bottom line. You know, it was just going higher and higher. And now that baseline was just always increasing. So as a real estate agent helping sellers at that time, I would look at the neighborhood and say, okay, the highest house that is similar to yours, same condition as yours, sold for 400 we can probably list for 410 and probably get 410. And that's what we were doing, but we're not at that time from anymore, especially not in Tucson, Arizona. Now, East Coast, Minnesota, you bet your butt, yes, that's exactly what they're still doing. There are bidding wars, there are frenzies out there, but in Tucson, Arizona, things have slowed down. You can no longer be that trailblazer and increasing the value of your neighborhood by selling at the highest amount ever. No matter what market you're in, again, if you want a connection to a real estate agent, text me, but no matter what market you're in, whether it's a heavy seller's market, a heavy buyer's market, or somewhere in the middle, there is something called days on market. And there is an average days on market, which is usually a little bit higher and skewed. I want you to look at the median days on market. And really you're going to need your real estate agents help on this, but there is a number for Tucson, Arizona. If you're looking to sell your property in Tucson, the median days on market is 23. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're in Tucson, because the number is different in Vail and Sabarita, Marana, I'll get there in a second. But as soon as you hit day 20 and you're not under contract yet, you're already now behind the ball. You're now having to drop your price in order to get that bidding war, to get multiple offers. Cause we're talking about multiple offers here. We're not talking about getting an offer. If you're not that motivated to sell your property, then yeah, you can probably keep your house in the market for 180 days and get a price eventually. I'm talking about creating a lot of traction, a lot of hype around your property. It has to be from the start. And guess what? This time last year, the days on market was 18, meaning as soon as you hit around day 15, if you didn't have any offers on your property and you didn't go under contract yet, you were behind the ball by fi by day 15. So now we're at about day 20. And I wanna give you the numbers now for Sawarita, Green Valley, everything else. The median days on market for Sawarita is 46. So around the 40 day mark, about a month after being live on the market, if you haven't even received one offer, you're too late. If you're in Marana, overall Marana, I'm not just talking you know, just Gladden Farms, the day is 36. And if you're in Oro Valley, it's 10, 10 days on market. So around the eight day mark, one week later after you listing your property on the market, if you don't have any offers, you've listed it too high. So I do not want you to be in this position. And I also want to warn you of when you're even interviewing real estate agents, do not choose the agent that says that they can list it at XYZ price. Because 
agents are going to try to win your business. And it sounds bad, but a lot of agents have commission breath. They need your sale to pay their bills. That's one thing about me and my team. We don't need your business. We want it. We don't need it. So they're going to say, oh, you want to sell your house at $700,000? Yeah, we can do that. We can get it. And it sounds bad. You know, there are good agents and bad agents everywhere. There are good insurance agents and, you know, bad ones out there. There are good car salesmen and there are bad ones out there. There's always good and bad. So I just don't want you to choose an agent that says that they can sell your house at a high price because they're just trying to get the listing. It's unethical. It shouldn't be done, but it happens all the time because, I mean, as a seller, you know, you want to get the most amount of bang for your buck. You want to sell at the highest amount possible. So when agents come in as you're interviewing them and they say, ah, it's, we're thinking around, you know, 600 based on the comps, 600, 600, 590, you know, 610. And then someone else says, oh, they said 610. I can get you 670. You're like, oh my God. Yeah, that's the number I was going for. Let's do it. I just don't put yourself in that position please. And also don't use these numbers for the future. The market can change at any time. So if you want the current numbers, text me. That's what I'm here for. I do these videos for you to help educate you because there isn't a lot of education about the home selling process. There is a crap ton about buying and investing, but not as much about selling. And I'm here to change that, especially since I have noticed that a lot of my YouTube subscribers, commenters, commenters, followers <laughs> own property already in Tucson. They already live in Tucson. So I'm doing these videos for you, hoping that I could be of service. My crew and I can help be of service to you and help you sell at the price you want, the terms you want, when you want, and help you net the most. So going back to the original question of how do you get multiple offers, it's pricing it right. All of that was to make sure it's priced right, because if it's not, it's an uphill battle and it's going to hurt. And when I mean uphill battle, I mean, you're going to be reducing your price of your property every so often just to catch up or down to the buyer's demand. I hope I'm making sense here. Always put yourself in the buyer's shoes. If they sell a property where the neighbor sold for, let's say 700 and this new property, which is your property is on the market for 800 and there's not that much of a difference. You know, I'm talking a huge, you know, drastic difference, but say you listed your property for 730 and it's the same thing as your neighbor that sold less than six months ago at 700. Why should they choose yours? Why wouldn't they just keep looking? And on the flip side, say you continued with the higher price and you hit the median days on market, and then you hit even higher, which is usually the average days on market. As a buyer, again, putting yourself in the buyer's shoes, when you're looking to purchase and you see a property that's been on the market way longer than the others, or just above the average of that zip code, what do you do? What goes through your mind when you plan on purchasing that property? Do you plan on offering at the list price? Or when your real estate agent calls them and they say, hey, they've been on the market for three times as long as the average, or just the average amount of days on market, Market and they have no offers. What's going through your mind? I bet you wouldn't even be planning on placing an offer that's the list price, let alone anything above it. You're gonna be saying, hey, let's let's get this maybe 30,000 below. Let's just make a lowball offer since they clearly don't have any other offers. Do not be in that position. You can avoid it. Now on the contrary, say you're a buyer and you see a house that's prime on the market, it's less than a week old, your real estate agent calls the listing agent and says, how many offers are there? And they already have four offers. How is that going to affect your offer? Chances are you're gonna be paying above the list price or doing something else to make sure that you get your offer accepted because it's a multiple offer situation. So when you're going over the comps, which are the other houses in the neighborhood that have sold, look at their photos, look at every single one of them. What kind of updates have they done? Now I'm not saying do those updates, but look up the square footage, the year built, what does the inside look like? And reach out to me to see how much exactly that seller gave toward the buyer in seller concessions. How much did that seller pay toward the buyer's closing costs? Because in Tucson, that's happening and it's happening in the tens of thousands. So yes, you might see that they sold for 700, but maybe they paid majority of the buyer's closing costs, which say that's $15,000. Maybe during inspections, they ended up paying for a whole new roof. You just don't know. You'll need the real estate agent's help in order to look into the MLS and see that information for you. But overall, look at your neighbor's houses, how much did they sell for, and honestly, honestly try to compare what does my house look like in comparison to those that have sold. Don't even really pay too much attention to what houses are currently on the market because anybody can list at any price. List price does not matter when it comes to value. The only thing list price does is make sure that you don't push any buyers away. After you have evaluated all the properties that have sold within your area, you've spoken to a real estate agent, you've booked a call with us with the Zoom 
Zoom link below, hopefully. Then we can take the next steps so we can see your property to make sure that we are giving you tailored advice specific to your property, your situation to help you net the most. That's exactly why I do these videos. So if you're looking to sell in Tucson, Arizona, Vail, Marana, Gladden Farms, Sawarita, Green Valley, my crew and I are here for you. Book a call using the link below. If you're looking to sell your property and you're not even in the state, I can still help. I want to make sure that I give you a couple of real estate agent recommendations that will be the best fit for you. So also shoot me a text or book a call using the link below. If you want to know exactly how much are you going to keep after you sell your property, watch this video over here.